that would be our demand. And we prefer that the hopper would be learnable by the local score block. Just like expanding, sort of like the 2012 style that a lot of teams do in the Autot will load in from other blocks into the their hopper. And sort of something like that, the logo box would jump into our hopper, or a high roll box would sort of shoot into our hopper uh, for more balls than not. And you look at me, you know going to be the crazy guys? Watch that from 2012. Watch that all the thing. Alright, now we're going to switch over to the elbow, which, please work. Uh, yes, uh, that's So we went for the uh, short and wide block. Uh, so this is just the left view of our robot. Um, on the left, you can see our gear mechanism. So it's a pretty simple thing. It's just sort of an opening in the back that dumps the gear in. And you'll see more about how the gear is centered and pushed out later. And then on the other side, you can sort of see our hopper. So it's really big. It's open. It takes up the entire space of the robot that's not the bottom for electronics. And so that makes it much easier to get balls in. It's also extremely wide because it's basically the entire width of our robot. Uh, which means that we hit the hopper, basically all the balls are going to fall into us. We don't have to worry too much about centering. Uh, yeah, and then our shooter is a uh, uh, wheel, which are not an articulating hood, but a two position hood that's actuated by a pneumatic cylinder. And uh, we'll go into that a little bit more later. So that's the left view. Uh, this is the top view. So um, we did decide to use uh, two independent. Uh, Computers. We thought that that was the best way to achieve a high frequency of ball to enter the low ball. Uh, as you can sort of see, there's like lamps that sort of push it all in. The low, L means low and H means high because I can't draw gradients, so <laughs> the best I could do. Uh, and then these spinning things uh, basically are just little rods that spin, and that's just going to stop it from jamming, which is quality of yeah, agitators, so that was what easily our biggest concern was that a hopper was going to jam and we wouldn't be able to feed balls. And if you've seen the robot in three days, that was one of their big problems. Yeah. Basically. And so that would be a huge detriment if you want to shoot balls fast. It's really good to shoot balls fast, it's impossible if you can't you know, shoot a ball. So that's just going to keep the balls moving and stop And it's also going to feed them in to yeah. shoot at a faster rate. Like that's that's a good. How do we solve it? And then on the other side, you can sort of see a little bit better with the gear mechanism. Uh, so this is basically, uh, it's two little um, L's and those hold in the gears, and then these things right here are pneumatic cylinders, and so when they extend, they sort of push the gear out. And there's also an opening in the thing right here, so these uh, both hold them in the gear, both hold them in the robot, and then when the pneumatic cylinders are activated, they push it out onto the rod. Keep on moving. You can sort of see the dimensions, I hope. Uh, right is this semi to scale? What? Is yes, this, this is scale? one box is one inch, generally. For most stuff. Is, is this the, uh, the short robot or the long robot? This is the short, short robot and wide. So, and, and I'll show you um, a better step. Yeah. So this is the front view. Uh, so basically this is how the gear mechanism centers. It's really simple, a passive wedge that sort of drops it in. And then everything that's shaded is material. And this part is where the cutout is. Uh, so yeah, you can't really see the uh, thing that's holding. These are what's holding it in, like the little tabs that uh, push it out. And then, so I didn't have a lot of time to draw it, so I was kind of doing this during math class, but that's on tape now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, no information about where this is from. This is completely copied from R3D. Uh, and it's basically the X-Wing design is what I sort of dubbed it. Uh, it's really simple. It just looks like that, and it catches the um, dot, which as you can see, I sort of do a dotting line that's bigger than that, and then it just sort of spins, and you move to your robot, basically rotates at 90 degrees, and pulls it right up. Uh, nice things about that, you don't, it's very simple, you don't need to worry too much about where your knot is tied, about sort of having the climber move relative to your robot. Uh, there would be placed here with, on the other side of the hopper, so this is the gear mechanism, and so the hopper would already be slanted down, so there's already sort of a cabinet there. Yes. And we would have a knot on the Yes. Yeah, so I just sort of guessed the height. I didn't have a game plan. All right. Uh, this is our robot. Uh, so we left an inch on each side uh, for the weight. We didn't actually put any lumen for articulating out at all because we didn't put it on the intake. There always is a way I think 
did see we did take advantage of the three sim uh, ball shifters that we already have. I didn't draw three sims. And we were going to do six wheels uh, with the drop center, uh, pretty standard. Uh, and then back to the bump, bumper cutouts for climbing that I forgot about, because I didn't intend. So it's whatever shaded orange is where the bumper would be cut out for the climber. And then I think I have one more. Yeah, so that's the studio. That's just a little bit better picture. And it's also demonstrating how the hood works. That it sort of, sort of dramatically does like these two hoods, and one dramatically flips back and flips forward uh, for two shots. I'm not quite sure what the two shots would be, but my best guess would be one would be right up against the, um, the, uh, the boiler, and the other would be sort of somewhat farther away, maybe, I don't know, it's hard to tell exactly where, but probably, you know, two or four feet away, sort of depending on what we decide is an effective strategy. And then if that becomes, we don't like it, we can change that into a full articulating where we have complete variable uh, shot distance. And then our uh, intake. <laughs> which is something I was thinking about. And I kinda, the biggest problem about intake was storing up and away because our uh, hopper, uh, uh, here we go, uh, for our intake, uh, because we have such a tall hopper, we need the intake to, bring, in addition to bring up the balls, uh, to also bring it over. So the best idea I had was a pretty simple four bar linkage. Um, wait, hold on. Um, sort of like that, and uh, that's very simple, obviously. We'd have to shrink the chassis to fit it, but it would sort of bring the balls up and over. Obviously, this would be cut down like that, and we'd bring the ball up and over, and then to the track, it would just literally go right flush against the thing. And that was the best idea I've had to store it, and sort of keep it out of trouble, because you obviously can't have something that comes way out of your robot over the top, because that would violate the volume requirements. Uh, floor intake, yeah. So just, uh, this is obviously, this would be the intake right here. This would I be thought the earlier you said you were feeding from the hopper. Yeah, so mainly, this was, <laughs> that was before, then this, was, this is a on the way here, I had an idea <laughs> of how to do it. This is a I didn't really have <laughs> bread. My pen was out of the ink, which is super exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so the four bar is four, four bar let up. The four bar linkage would move this sort of parallel to this and would store it right up against it and then pop out. And so yeah, that's what it looks like. So any questions? A lot of questions. Okay, so you're getting the gear from the loading zone? Yeah, so the gear will be from the loading zone. We do not have any gear for it. But you have a short robot, right? Yes. You are aware that it is one foot below the loading zone. Actually, no, no, it's exactly the same as one inch. 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 One One inch. 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 Yes. Uh, you said you're going to use pneumatics a lot. Um, yes. How much current do you think a compressor would run? And oh, okay. First, are you running a compressor on this robot? And if so, how much current do you think that would run, and how would that interfere with your shooter toward the later end of the match? Uh, so pneumatics that we are running. Uh, it's two very small cylinders for this. Uh, one for the hood, which actually needs to be kind of beefy so that the hood doesn't deflect when we're shooting balls. And two for this linkage if we end up using it. And the ball shift. And the shifter. So yeah, we probably run a compressor. What? They're kind of tiny. Uh, maybe run a compressor, maybe not. Kind of depends on space. We do have a decent bit of space, so maybe not. I, I'm more worried about current. Yeah. No, as an electrician, which I'm not. I, I don't know. Maybe. 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 Question? No, oh, hold on. One of you. Yeah, sure. We got George. Um, 
So yeah, it's a problem, but as a robot, this isn't anything crazy that like is more like follow that browsers than other robots, I guess is what I'm saying. Um so looking at the HUD, um if the HUD is hooked up to an automatic cylinder, it only has two positions. Yeah. Um how will you get will you shoot at the top of from different distances away? We won't. So we'll shoot the basically the uh, the low push position. Uh, the low first position, uh, this one. Can you see that? That's yeah. Uh, that one will be sh like shooting either right in the key or smushed up against the boiler. And the uh, far shooting position will be just from shooting a uh, distance uh, so far away, maybe like, I don't know, a five inch circle, a five foot circle. So uh, it's not, we can only shoot from two distances, but based on our strategy, it's basically one distance is the defense location, which is push, press up against the boiler, and one is the uh, less driving distance, which is the other. We didn't feel the need to have multiple distances to shoot from. Spencer, do you want to share this floor? The what? Share the so, floor. So, yeah, if you want to interject, please. Uh, yeah. A lot of questions from anyone. Just start talking. So, so, so since you are saying the majority of the volume is going to be from the offer, and the hot. So um, are we going to have another team robot on your team just push me to push the hanger so that hopper will draw? Or are you going to push yourself? So the hopper is, the hopper is two feet, one inches. So this is the uh, front of our robot right here, which is uh, doesn't dimension. It is 40, 39 inches. Uh, the hopper is two feet, one inches. And the hopper and uh, the entire plate and hopper together, I think, is about 43 inches. So we'll be able to collect most of the balls while still putting a lot of the thing. So I think we'll, we won't be able to collect them all, it won't be perfect, but uh, this is the widest your robot should be. So basically, at most, you guys can collect 200 balls. Well, no, no, we're also loading from the feeding station, plus we will, we, I put on an intake design sort of last second, so. <laughs> it, so but it's gone. Your mind on the importance of floor loading? Uh, so the, I thought, Guys, and I want to say, like, the team, too. Yeah, anyone. Like, why did we... Like, why so did like he changed his mind on the airport. It's just like he thought of an idea where he could reconcile all three of them. The shooting, the gears, and what's, the floor. So and what's the uh, floor intake on your chart there? Is it a curve problem? Or? We didn't put it on because originally the problem with the floor intake was we didn't think we could package it in our robot. <laughs> and I still, I, I, still agree. I still think it's going to be tough to package. It's going to bite into our hopper space because right now I have an inch between the edge of the hopper and the outside of the robot, which isn't enough to package an intake, even if it's completely vertical. So, um, yeah, we need to cut into the hopper, and it might not be worth it, it might be. This is just an idea. And uh, basically, the reason we didn't want to do an intake is because we couldn't catch it. Other teams may find a way to do this. Our focus was like <clears throat> hopper space. It's also the balance of the value of points uh, and uh, time and distraction of chasing after balls on the ground versus the number of points you get. Anybody else have questions? Well, you, a couple of more and then we have to move on because we have How did your intake work? Because that looked like a stick that moves up and down. So go <laughs> Okay, then I'm not going to explain this. Yeah, it's, 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 do that later. I think so, uh, uh, it's a good uh, Spencer, if I may. So here's how it works. Ready? It's up against the it's up against the hopper. It comes out like this, and the balls come up this way through the channel over the top. That's uh, it. What, what pushes the pneumatic cylinder, you said, right? Yeah. No, no, that's what pushes the, the thing apart. Yeah. Thing and apart. Then, and then and then how do you get balls to define how do you how do you get balls to define balls? There's a spinner. Oh, something that goes in. What's this weird thing that creates rotational motion? Separate. What? 
Um, so basically what it would be is just a really thin piece of, uh, it's really poorly drawn, uh, a really thin piece of uh, polycarb or sheep or something that just divides the two hoppers in half. Well, no, it's in the middle. And so when the balls come in, so why is We'll do a little demonstration. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Everybody, great job. All right. I thought you were asking Who's next? Zero. How about three? Who's three? All random number. Yeah, random number. That was what really good question that I've thought about, which is that what if white sides are all balls? Yes! Yeah, yeah, by the way. Nobody this way, there's a button. Yeah, there you go. Are you guys ready? Do I want to stand in front? Shh. Everybody. Okay, so we are we are group three, and so we made a uh, short robot. Because we thought that the volume constraints was a lot better on a short robot than the tall robot. And our game strategy is to pick up gears for two, or at least three motors. We're not going to go for the fourth one. In the fourth one is going to be take a lot of gears and does the worth it for 40 points. And also we're going to have a ground pickup since we feel like that is reasonable since if there's going to be a drop of gears on the, like, either on the loading station or on the field, we can pick it up. And we can, it's possible that we can make the gear ground pickup really fast so that it won't take time. And so, the ground, and also, we can make the gear pick up so that we can collect balls while we're running and going for gears. And for ball pickups, we're deciding to have a um, roller or a brush, which actually is going to fit inside a robot and, and push all the balls into a cabin like a vacuum cleaner. And then, not the vacuum part, the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so the, uh, like a the vacuum cleaner the without the vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and also, um, for the shooter, we decided to have a turret, which means we can turn it at any angles and have it to have it to shoot at any height we want. Which means we can run, we can just, we can run. Okay. Why are collecting balls and running when we'll still shoot? Well, that's not true. Anyways, um, for the climber, we decided to have a wheel climber. We didn't resolve really a hard into this because we didn't really have a lot of time. We decided to have two wheels that that. <laughs> That's to us this way, which will um, retract, which will climb the climb up the world. We were thinking about how to intake the rope, but that will happen later. And for the sh and also it will have all these one side gate at the bottom, so the so the wheel can come in but cannot go out. Uh, we have th we were thinking about shooting while climbing, and that's gonna be really cool to do. But it's gonna happen. Yeah, that was just a like, yeah, I just shoot it. Technically, uh, 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 pretty sure it's not that powerful, but we would like for it to happen. So I designed this gear pickup thing, and it's basically um, it's going to ground pickup, and it's not super complex. It require only one piston to do all the job. 
and probably some mechanical types in order to close. And then um, it's gonna have it's gonna pick up the ground uh, horizontally and it's gonna pick up the gear work to, to a vertical <coughs> position. And basically um, the, the pros will be that but the cons will be uh, it's unable to load from its loading station, but I mean right away, it's not passive, it's active. So basically you push the gear out from the loading station and then it will end up farther away from the wall which can just run in and collect the gear. And um, this will take some space for the um, cabin, but we thought that was kind of fine. <coughs> and so the yeah. reason why we went with this design is because we thought the loading station was 3P, not yeah. 2P. That's so the point. We originally yeah. had Spencer design. We we'll have we'll have a passive thing. one, but we thought that would require we thought it was three piece, so that would require a tower robot, which means that other things won't work out. Anyway, you guys have another slide in the picture? Yeah, yeah. that's my drawing. Oh, sure. Anyway, we can use no something. No, oh, I can. I have. I have a green drawing. Right, is that a little bit there? Just, everybody can see the picture, just talk to the picture. Oh, oh you can see it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So basically, this part will be the gear so you grab it into this thing and die correctly. And so, what, when this thing will, when, this, when, the, when the gear pickup is at this position, it will be at the floor, a level at the floor, and so the gears can come in when you ride into it. And I have these two things that.